Hello, this is Arthur Clarke speaking to you from my home in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, my name is Rohan De Silva. And you used to work with Arthur C. Yeah. Clarke? Yeah. Fantastic. So this is his office? Uh, this is his office. And can you take us around? Are you sure? Uh, this is where I work. And uh, his computer was there. Uh, the, the computer which is in the other room we are using at the moment because all the emails and stuff is there. Uh, this is all the books he wrote. And how long did he work each day? Was he regular with his work patterns? Uh, it was about, uh, about 10 years back, he was working about 16 hours a day. 16 hours yeah. a day? Yeah, 13 to 16, like that. And he'd be in constant email communication? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, up to what age was he diving? Because I know there's a diving school here as well. Yeah, he, this, he did this the last dive, I think, uh, somewhere in 1992, which is his first uh, 100 feet dive. Wow. The cassette is somewhere here. <laughs> so these are videotapes taken from his diving and... Uh, yes. Last one picture taken in his last dive. What was it about diving that he loved? Uh, because he's uh, like zero gravity, something like that. Yeah. In my time, I've been very fortunate to have seen many of my dreams come true. Growing up in the 1920s and 30s, I never expected to see so much happen in the span of a few decades. Here he is with Buzz Aldrin, second man on the moon. Family pictures, articles. As I tried to survive on 15 hours sleep a day, I had plenty of time to enjoy vivid dreams. Being completely wheelchaired doesn't stop my mind from roaming the universe. On the contrary, I've always believed that we're not alone in the universe but we're still waiting for E.T. to call us or give us some kind of sign. We have no way of guessing when this might happen. I hope sooner rather than later. I'm sometimes asked how I would like to be remembered. I've had a diverse career as a writer, underwater explorer, space promoter and the science popularizer. Of all these, I want to be remembered most as a writer, one who entertained readers and hopefully stretched their imaginations as well. Do you think this was worth the first 15 pounds they paid me? 15 pounds yeah. for basically coming up with the idea yeah. of the geostationary satellite. That's right. What do you think? Worth 15 pounds? <laughs> uh, Worth a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic. You can have this. That was uh, Arthur's car. So here we have Arthur C. Clarke's car coming down to the garage. Oh, there's a familiar picture. That's not Arthur C. Clarke, right? There's Arthur C. Clarke's car. Nice set of wheels.
That was the artist's car. If I have given you delight by aught that I have done, let me lie quiet in that night which shall be yours anon. And for the little, little span the dead are born in mind, seek not to question other than the books I leave behind. Two visionaries of the space age together, Arthur C. Clarke and Werner von Braun. Amazing. So I think that's Arthur C. Clarke with Darth Vader, David Prowse, and uh, Captain Picard, if I'm not mistaken. Well, we space cadets of the British Independent Society spent all our spare time discussing space travel. And we didn't imagine that it lay in our own near future. I still can't quite believe that we've just marked the 50th anniversary of the space age. We've accomplished a great deal in that time, but the golden age of space is only just beginning. Over the next 50 years, thousands of people will travel to Earth orbit and then to the moon and beyond. Space travel and space tourism will one day become almost as commonplace as flying to exotic destinations on our own planet. This is Arthur Clarke saying thank you and goodbye from Colombo.